From the time the goal was a peach basket, Americans have dominated basketball. Their mastery has been rarely overcome in international competition. Most memorably, the two Olympic defeats to the Soviet Union. And in 1987, the Pan Am game. Virginia wins the goal. Shocking game. was the first loss on American soil in international play. Brazil was the giant killer, and Oscar Schmidt its inspiration. This year, Brazil celebrates its 100th anniversary of basketball, and Schmidt is still their living legend. He is to Brazilian basketball what Pele was to soccer, and at 38, he enters his fifth and final Olympic Games. I keep playing because past is past, over, and I must play every day. Every day I must kill the lion every day. Reggie Miller is America's Oscar Schmidt. Miller, with the same deadly credentials, can from any distance demoralize any defense. His first Olympics is just two weeks away, and his presence on this green team parallels Schmidt's importance to Brazil. Our common goal is to do really two things, seek and destroy. And I think with the 12 guys we have on this team, Everyone's common goal is to win that gold medal. Two longtime Olympic basketball rivals showcasing two premier shooting guards. The green team meets Brazil. This is USA Basketball on NBC. The Dream Team. And now, a look at downtown Cleveland, Ohio on a beautiful 83 degree day. It will be a capacity crowd better than 20,000 at the Cond Arena, the home of the Cleveland Cavaliers. But today, the site for game two of the Dream Team five-game exhibition tour. They face international competition for the first time going against the Brazilian Olympic team. Everybody, I'm Marv Albert along with Mac Dukas. For those of you who missed uh, yesterday's opening exhibition game against the U.S. Select Team, a group of, of college all-stars, it was not pretty for the Green Team, although they did pull it out by the score of 96 to 90, but they had big problems down by 17 at the half. The Select Team shot 63% in the first half. The Green Team looking sluggish, looking rusty, but yesterday's experience got the attention of the entire team. Well, they were a little embarrassed, a little upset. Uh, which is naturally so. That could have been the best thing for this team is to have a game like that, especially to start off a game like that. No, there's no cause for the concern. The, the players now know they got to play defense. We definitely got to play a lot better in these next four exhibition games to get ready for Atlanta. Well, Matt, the Dream Team did win yesterday, but uh, not the type of game that Lenny Wilkins had in mind. Well, Matt, they were asleep in the first half, but in the second, they unleashed the defense that turns into easy baskets. Scotty Pippen, first team all defense, got it going. The ball always seems to find his long arm and nobody can catch his long stride. Even the big men like Charles Barkley and Carl Malone were more active, forcing in yet another turnover to deflate the college kids. And Gary Payton, defensive player of the year, right in the middle of the thing, picks one off, leading to the high percentage shot. The USA got the wake-up call yesterday, but I look for them to bare their teeth early in this one. And today the opponent is Brazil. They are led by the legendary 38-year-old Oscar Schmidt, the all-time Olympic scorer. And uh, Oscar, we should uh, say, is a guy who likes to shoot, not very shy about pumping him up. Well, Oscar Schmidt is a flat-out scoring machine. He never met a shot he didn't like and he has unlimited range. No stranger to Olympic competition. This will be number five for the Brazilian Bomber. They brought him out of international retirement to put the ball in the hole. And starting out for the USA today, it will be Mitch Richmond's job to stay up close and personal with Oscar Schmidt. All right, so coming up, it's the green team facing Brazil. We'll be back with the start of the game in just a moment. to you by Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. It's the cheesiest. By FedEx. 
proud sponsor of the USA Basketball Dream Team. By IBM, worldwide Olympic sponsor. And by New Miller Beer, the brand new beer from Miller with big flavor that goes down easy. Back in Cleveland, and today's game is all part of the city of Cleveland's 200th birthday celebration. The Dream Team in Brazil warming up, getting ready for the start of today's game. And once again, we're joined on the sideline by a 1984 gold medal winner, Cheryl Miller. Let's check in with Cheryl. Thanks a lot, Marv. Well, the Dream Team's close shave, I'll tell you one thing, was very remarkable. The uh, Brazilian team was only able to watch them at halftime. They feel confident that they can beat this team. However, Coach Vidal reminded his players the team that they saw yesterday will be different than the team that they face today. He went on to tell his players that all they need to do is proceed with some cautious optimism, stick to your game plan, try to match the intensity of the Dream Team, and anything's possible. Guys? All right, thank you, Cheryl. And Lenny Wilkins said we will not have a first half like that again, referring to what took place yesterday uh, in Detroit. Look at the starting lineups. Oscar Schmidt is the man of uh, concern for the U.S. All-time leading scorer in Olympic basketball history, averaging just under 31 a game. You can see that Lenny Wilkins has shuffled his starting lineup. In fact, Shaquille O'Neal did not play at all in the second half uh, yesterday. Mitch Richmond starting with Penny Hardaway. Hardaway uh, did not play much yesterday. And there is Oscar, who has come out of retirement. He's a guy, Matt, who says he does not believe in lifting weights. He believes in shooting. <laughs> and he says he takes 500 shots a day. And he prays for very a long period of time before every game, no doubt, hoping his arm stays on. This man will launch it at any time. And uh, I asked Lenny Wilkins before the game if there was anything to be read in the fact that Shaq and Penny did not play in the second half. He said, no, the other guys just had it going, and he stayed with that group who played so well defensively in the second half. The officials, George Tolliver from the NBA at Hightower of the Big Ten and the Big Eight of the Dream Team controlling Mitch Richmond. The Dream Team a 2-0 lead. Andre Fonseca handling the ball. He is the point guard. Guarded by Penny Hardaway. This is Fernando Minucci being played by Mitch Richmond here at the start. Pippen is on uh, Oscar Schmidt, at least here in the opening minutes. Brazil able to keep it alive in the foul as uh, Viana uh, took the hit on the hand. Well, it looks like initially whether it's either going to be Pippen or Richmond, whoever finds Oscar Schmidt first in transition, stay with him. But that time, actually, uh, Oscar Schmidt was uh, with somebody else, and Scotty Pippen rushed over to find him. You remember in the uh, Barcelona Olympics where Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan were really bent on keeping Tony Kukoc of Croatia from getting involved offensively, wanted to guard him, and no doubt Scotty Pippen wants that challenge to shut down Oscar Schmidt. That was the first meeting against uh, Croatia, led by Tony Kukoc, and they shut him down, although Tony had a much better game in the gold medal affair and did well in the first half. Lenny Wilkins, the one-time coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers and a player here with uh, the Cavs over the years, part of his Hall of Fame career, the NBA's all-time winningest coach. But wasn't feeling too good about things yesterday in that, in that first half. Here's Shaquille O'Neal. It counts. And the foul. Shaquille O'Neal. Well, Jaswaldo Santos just not strong enough to do anything in keeping Shaquille away from that lane area. Shaq just backing in, waiting till he felt some pressure, and then a nice little drop step uh, to the baseline to get inside Dos Santos. But Shaquille, a 54% free throw shooter during the regular season, coming up way short on that uh, free throw attempt. Four to two, the dream team on top. Manucci getting it over. O'Neal. And the game is tied at four. Fernando Manucci, one of the better players in Brazil at the age of, of 27. Pippen guarded by Viana. And deflected out. Last touch. Let's see. Last touch by the Dream Team. Well, this is a Brazilian team. Likes to get out and run as much as possible. Ball will remain with the USA. Bit a change on that call, so uh, Pippen throws it in. We are just underway. A minute and a half gone by. Mitch Richmond not able to hit from downtown. And back comes Manucci of Brazil. 
And here is Oscar Schmidt. Fonseca kept it alive. That's pretty much Brazil's game. Get out and run, and as soon as it gets into Oscar's hands, be ready to look for some kind of a rebound, or if it goes through the net, get back on defense. In fact, about five, six, ten years ago, they were really a run-and-gun team, much like Doug Moe's team with the Denver Nuggets. Shot clock out of five, and a foul is called on, on Barkley. Barkley all over Joel Viana. Well, here, Oscar Schmidt uh, just roaming the baseline. Really doesn't use screens that well, but just keeps moving around. Remind you a lot about uh, a little bit about Larry Bird, the way that he used to move without the basketball, and of course the quick release and those 500 shots a game. And talking with Mike Frank, the assistant coach of Brazil, saying he doesn't really use screens that well. It's just his constant movement and feel for the game. And he also says his spacing is not that good. He'll chase the ball down instead of creating space to make it a 15, 18 foot pass. So well, here's Brazil up by the score of 6-4 and they go to some pressure defense. Barkley with a nice screen. O'Neal from Barkley and the game is tied at 6. Oscar Schmidt putting a series of moves on and then hitting with the underhand toss. He'll find a way. He's known more for that perimeter shot, but he'll score a different way. Rick been able to time the game. Fonseca beating Hardaway off the dribble. Manucci. Fonseca. Fonseca with the driving hook. And it's Brazil by two. You know, yesterday, with the select team leading by as many as 17 at the half, it was the first time that any of the three dream teams since 1992 had ever fallen behind by more than 10 points. Barkley rebounded by Viana. And here is Brazil taking the early lead against the dream team. And you can see Brazil wants to get out and run every time. The coaching staff, Ari Vidal, the head coach, has to constantly pull them back they want them. They don't want to hold the ball, per se, but they want to be patient and make sure they get a good shot and not get in an up-and-down game with the USA. Oh, oh. Santos. That was stopped by O'Neal. Pippen with the hesitation dribble and lost it. The steal by Fonseca. It's a four on one, but Oscar fires from downtown. Forget about four on one. Take the shot from 20 feet away. Well, that's their game, and actually he had a man open on the right wing. He's not going to pass that much either. He is a good passer. He just won't do it. Brazil up 13-8, and O'Neal off the double team had it uh, knocked away. Well, Oscar Schmidt taking a post position against Scotty Pippen. Actually, Oscar's about an inch taller than Scotty, but the nice up and under move, and to use the kiss off the glass against one of the best defenders in the business, Scotty Pippen. Hardaway looking to post up Fonseca, but they collapse on him. Here's Pippen for three. Rebounded by O'Neal. He'll take it to the basket. O'Neal will power his way. He has six points, and it's Brazil by three. And Joe Small put Dos Santos a little bit upset that he got overpowered that, by, that time by Shaquille O'Neal. Went out and ran, wanted that long pass. Brazil wants to get out and go. They don't realize how dangerous that could be as a steady diet against the Green Team. Let's try to shake off Pippen. That was straight. Recovered, though, by Dos Santos. And uh, knocked out of bounds. It will be Brazil in possession with seven on the shot clock and a a timeout taken, four and a half gone by in this first half. Uh, Scotty Pippen working very hard, getting up in the chest, up in the face of Oscar Schmidt, working hard, keeping those hands and feet moving, and finally knocking that ball loose. Oscar Schmidt hitting two of his first three from the field, including a three. How do you defend Oscar? Well, we asked that of Reggie Miller. He's a great shooter, but what you want to do is try to crowd him, uh, try to take away his touches, but you got to understand he's going to shoot 25 to 30 times a game because he is their main scorer. Um, you just want to put him in a tough position and try to wear him down as much as possible. Well, you have to stay with Oscar Schmidt at all time and almost face guard him as Scotty Pippen is doing there. Keep as much body contact, trail him around the screen and get up into him. He is not known for being able to put the ball on the floor and create, although we saw him make a nice post move a little earlier with the up and under against Pippen. 
but you want to make him do that rather than give him any kind of look at the hoop. Oscar Schmidt retired after the Barcelona Olympics. Brazil finishing in fifth spot. But at the urging of the Brazilian coaches, came back for the qualifying tournament in 1995 to help Brazil earn a spot in the Olympic Games. And uh, here he is at 38 years of age. Now guarding Mitch Richmond. Barkley on the floor. And they'll regroup. Hardaway takes it to the basket. And it's Brazil 13, the green team 12. And another reason, I think, with this starting lineup with Pippen, Barkley, Richmond, and Hardaway, all same size type of people in that 6'4 to 6'7 range, anytime there is Oscar Schmidt coming off the screen, it will be an easy switch. We just saw it right there with Richmond finding Oscar Schmidt. Richmond in the chest of Schmidt. Oscar looks intent on releasing for that shot. Viana. You gotta get it. And the ball goes back now to the uh, green team. The green team with a difficult time, surprisingly, in their opening exhibition game yesterday, just getting by. And uh, not looking real sharp here at uh, the start against Brazil. We were reminded, though, prior to the Barcelona Olympics, you recall that developmental team made up of college of players involved in a uh, scrimmage. Here is Schmidt. And that was not a full game, but they knocked off the original dream team. But uh, then the guys came back and pounded the college players, Pippen giving the green team a one-point lead. That was in a 20-minute scrimmage. A couple of members of that team, Anthony Hardaway and Grant Hill. Also, Bobby Hurley played very well in that particular practice. Chris Weber and Michael Jordan said afterwards that I don't know about the rest of the world that we're playing against, but this team could win a silver medal. Oh, what a move by Hardaway and some unselfish play as Barkley led Pippen for a 16-13 lead. And the USA needs more of those kinds of flurries defensively, where they get two or three with their steals or force some misses, where they can get out and run and get some easy baskets. And that's how they're going to be burying teams the rest of this month. It's going to have to start at the defensive end. Nice play by Penny Hardaway and the unselfish feed, Barkley to Pippen. 8-0 run for the United States, the last two minutes and 20 seconds. Schmidt, although double teamed, able to line drive at home. Seven points for Oscar Schmidt. Pippen, broke it up. You were bailing again. I was. It came in our direction, and I was veering aside. There's Scotty Pippen. Again, trailing, trailing on the baseline. Even Penny Hardaway steps up to help out, but... Oscar Schmidt has such a quick release and only needs the eye of the needle to get that shot off. And the steal by Viana. And here's Dos Santos running the floor. Well, that's the play he wanted before. He's going to release, figuring he can beat Shaquille down the floor, but he's going to finish the Beautiful play. He's got him tipping on the finish. They're not going to throw that long pass for Dos Santos. All right, the United States with a three-point lead, 12 and a half remaining. In this first half, Marv Albert, Matt Gukas, and Cheryl Miller. Oh, the Santos loves the hook shot. And usually shoots it at a high percentage. And the United States uh, looking very sharp now. Eddie Hardaway has been leading the attack and setting people up. Nine of 16 from the field for the U.S. Hardaway will sit down. Gary Payton who appeared to be on the rusty side yesterday in that opening exhibition game, although his defensive play in the, in the second half uh, helped lead uh, the Dream Team to a spurt that eventually won the game. Well, we saw with uh, Gary Payton that uh, Pippen can't get the turnaround. Gary Payton with Seattle was called on to score a lot of points, but this team he doesn't have to score. Really, he just has to exert defensive pressure, and that's how he can help this ball club. Open three for Fonseca. Andre Fonseca, they call him the Rat. Very quick, excellent passer. Starting at the point guard position. U.S. will maintain possession as a timeout is taken. 11.52 to go in the first half, and the game tied at 18. 
Georgia. Week for the Dream Team has been a whirlwind, and Texaco brings you some of their road moments. Using the Dallas Mavericks private jet, Shaquille O'Neal enjoyed his arrival in the Detroit area. Press conferences were many for Gary Payton and Sir Charles, but uh, the big moment came with uh, Charles Barkley and David Robinson golf, the uh, recreational choice of most. David Robinson's son, David Jr., receiving valuable golfing tips from uh, Charles Barkley, although I'm told that Charles has been in kind of a, a golfing slump, and apparently everyone wants a piece of him. Well, you know, Charles has so much pride, and uh, particularly in his golf game, he refuses to take any handicapped strokes, so uh, he'll play a lot of people even, and doing that, he's going to lose uh, a few pennies. And here's Barkley getting inside. O'Neal not able to stop it. The game is tied at 18. Schmidt met by Pippen. And both teams have remained the same. Gary Payton has come on for Penny Hardaway. Brazil has uh, gone with their starting lineup right throughout on second. Try to put a move on Richmond. Shot clock is down to five. Viana. And here is Schmidt. Firing it up. He just fought that shot as Brazil never into any kind of offensive play there, just standing around the perimeter. Open shot for Mitch Richmond. Mitch Richmond of the Sacramento Kings, a member of the 1988 Olympic team that lost in Seoul. He and uh, David Robinson, members of that team with vivid memories. 17 on the uh, shot clock. And a big reason for that loss and only the bronze medal there is Hersey Hawkins had an a injury, unable to play in some of those final games, and that really hurt the American team. And a lot of people felt that was one reason why the United States got into Olympic competition with NBA players. The break, Peyton able to dump it down to Richmond. And the Dream Team leads 22. 18, Carl Malone and Akeem Olajuwon are getting set to check in for the first time. Would you like to have those two coming <laughs> off your bench ten and a half minutes into the game? Uh, you talk about that. Unbelievable. Charles Barkley alert defensively, picking off and then keeping his head up. And the nice lead bounce pass to Peyton and then to finish off as Rich, Mitch Richmond not only involved at the defensive end, but really offensive mind and looking to shoot the ball every time he touches it. And here's Schmidt, went to the left hand, rebounded by Olajuwon, and again a breakaway. Payton. Gary Payton extends the lead. Well, Oscar Schmidt is showing a sense. He's upset with the official Ed Hightower not for getting, not getting a whistle on that play. Senses that the USA trying to get up into his chest is putting the ball on the floor and trying to get to the hole. Wild shot by Josio Jurke, who just checked in. And a foul is called on Fonseca. That is the head coach of the Brazilian Olympic team, Ari Vidal. Coach Brazil of the gold medal in the 87 Pan American Games. Timeout is called. We'll be right back. Brazilian team, Ari Vidal, the man who originally discovered Oscar Schmidt. I mentioned he coached Brazil to that gold medal. Incredible win of the 87 Pan American Games, beating a U.S. team that included David Robinson, perhaps the finest hour for Brazilian basketball. Looking back at the history of Brazilian basketball, they first appeared in the Olympics in 1936. They tie the U.S. for most appearances in the Olympics with 11. And uh, they will be in Group B, where they likely will uh, finish between second and fourth, which could mean a, a quarterfinal meeting against either the United States, Lithuania, or Croatia. Foul committed by Manucci. Let's check in with Cheryl Miller. Marv, before that last timeout, Brazil, because they don't have much of an inside game defensively, they decided to go to a zone. And what happened was the United States team kept running and running and getting back in the transition game. So they called the last timeout and said, hey, we got to get back to playing straight man, the de uh, man defense, try to get back in our transition deep. The only problem is they told Oscar he needs to stop them playing because the officials aren't giving him the call. Yeah. All right, Cheryl. 
Oscar not happy with the way things are going in the United States with an 18-5 run the last six and a half minutes and they have their biggest lead of the game they're up by eight well he doesn't like being guarded this closely and having his jump shot taken away and when he does create some contact he expects the whistle to be blown but he's a little bit frustrated he's not getting the volume of shots that he normally does Benucci got the step on Richmond and Pittman able to handle protects against Viana nine minutes remaining in the first half we're at the gun arena in Cleveland, it's the second exhibition game for the Dream Team. Three more upcoming. We'll be on hand next Sunday from Indianapolis as uh, the Dream Team will take on the Greek National Team. One o'clock Eastern Time here on NBC. Fonseca hit by Richmond out of region. And a substitution. Rogerio Klopke, who is an excellent shooter, coming on, replacing Fernando Minucci. Rogerio, the second leading scorer in the Brazil Club League to Oscar Schmidt, averaged 24 a game. They try to use him as a bit of an instant offense off the bench and considered the heir apparent to Oscar Schmidt, Rogerio Klopke. And a big hand for Grant Hill as he checks in for the first time. Scotty Pippen is sitting down. And the foul is called. The, the spin move by Klofke. Foul committed by Hill. The Brazilian coaches see Klofke as the eventual replacement if Oscar Schmidt ever does actually retire and remain retired. In fact, uh, Klopke wore Schmidt's number 14 when the Oscar sat out on a recent national team competition. And Gerarke able to get inside for his first field goal. The United States up 26-20. We talk about Oscar Schmidt's lack of desire to pass. That was a nice play and a Larry Bird type of pass to the big man inside rolling to the basket. Right back. And now the matchup is Grant Hill defending against Oscar Schmidt. How would you put Scotty Pippen on the bench and bring off Grand Hill? Not bad because he'll work very hard at the defensive end. Always has. Since his college day. Klopke was rejected. And here's Peyton. Beautiful ball fight. The look away and then able to hit. And it's the dream team up by eight. Forcing that three-second call on Jorge. A nice roll in there by Rogerio. But the whole defense coming in on there. And Carl Malone, who normally does not get up in the air and block shots, he usually strips down low, able to get up there and swat that one away and start the fast break for the Dream Team. Finished off nicely by Fate. Fred able to break it up. Interesting to see the, the first names of some of the Brazilian players to see Oscar to see Rogerio I guess you can relate to that in your NBA days it just said Matt on your uniform isn't that correct something like that you sound a little skeptical before you don't think Oscar Schmidt's ever going to retire huh? he's only been at this international competition for 20 years well, Oscar says yes I'm 38 but I still run like a boy Viana was called on that foul, a reminder, Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern, NBC Sports will present the All-Star Game from the Vet in Philly. It's Summer Night's Classic, the All-Star Game. Bob Costas, Bob Euchre, Joe Morgan will bring it to you Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on NBC. 7.20 remaining in this first half. And it's the United States with a 28-20 lead on Brazil. Elijah Juan able to convert one of two. For the United States, the first game against international competition. Wednesday, they'll play the Chinese Olympic team in Phoenix. And then uh, Friday, they go up against Australia. Finger roll by Oscar. Payton lost it. Stripped by Fonseca, who goes around the wall in a wild attempt. The dribble off his foot. 
He must have thought that was Muncie Malone in there protecting the basket. <laughs> Little Fonseca, who stands about five foot nine, just took it right into Carl Malone with no chance of finishing that play off. I was talking to Lenny Wilkins before the game, and he was saying how hard it is to try to get all 12 in there and get them a reasonable amount of minutes. So he's just going to pick and choose as he goes right now. But he has to be a lot happier defensive effort he's seeing this afternoon compared to yesterday. Foul on Peyton as Fonseca went baseline. Certainly a better scenario from the field. The United States 13 of 26. And Brazil 8 for 22 here at the start. Last touch by, by Peyton. And Fonseca will throw in. Well, yesterday it was the three-point shooting by Shea Seals in that first half primarily. Six for 10 for the select team. And of course, you shoot the ball that well, plus their other shots were going in. And with the Dream Team very lethargic offensively, you're going to have some kind of a lead, but you don't expect it to be a 17-point lead. Santana taking a couple of extra steps. Antonio Santana, who checked in a, a moment ago, called for traveling. It was a magnificent shooting performance by Shea Seals out of Tulsa. 8 of 11, 20 points, 4 of 5 from three-point range and how about point guard Brevin Knight from Stanford and back comes Schmidt Knight with a strong all-around game and the foul on Elijah Wan as Jorke is sent flying and a terrific job by Stanford's head coach Mike Montgomery and his staff to uh, get his club ready on very short notice. Well, they were probably the most surprised people in the building having looked at at six practices we just saw uh, the, the, the Brazilian player, this gentleman, knocked that ball off the rim last time, and the crowd reacting to it momentarily. That's a legal play in international competition. Anytime the ball touches the rim, even if it is over the cylinder, it is a legal play from either side. But there is still goaltending in international basketball. If the shot is taken and it's on his way down uh, towards that cylinder, it still can be a goaltend. United States with a 29-24 lead as we approach six minutes remaining in the first half. Elijah Wan. Well, he hit one of those when he checked in yesterday. The spinning jumps from the baseline by Akeem for a seven-point lead. Klopke with a nice move and drew the foul. Well, this is the bread and butter play for Akeem Olajuwon. A little pick and not roll per se, but just pop to an open area. A little head shoulder, head and shoulder fake towards the middle. That step away baseline shot, the favorite maneuver for Akeem Olajuwon. Olajuwon just picked up the foul a second. Here's Penny Hardaway returning, replacing Gary Payton. And Demetrius Parasiu who is the second point guard on the Brazilian squad, has just come on for Andre Fonseca. Well, you see a conscious effort right now by Lenny Wilkins in trying to get Penny Hardaway going in some fashion. After not getting much done in the first half yesterday, not playing all in the second half, got a pretty good run here in the first half, took a breather, now back out on the floor, no doubt to finish the last five and a half minutes. Five-point lead for the United States. Lajuan got the step, setting up Miller for three. Reggie's been off. He hit his first from downtown yesterday, but has struggled. Lajuan, and he is fouled. Well, as we have touched on yesterday during the telecast, Matt, there are several differences uh, in the rules between NBA play and international competition. Well, the 20-minute halves makes the game go a lot faster. Obviously, we have TV timeouts during these exhibition games. Normally, there's only two timeouts per half, no 20-second timeout. The 30-second shot clock, five seconds to release a free throw. That probably should only affect Carl Malone, although we saw yesterday he got them off in time. And only three seconds to inbound from the side-out situation. United States leading 33-26. Boy, Oscar is being manhandled by Grant Hill right now. And he was forced into the turnover. Here comes Hill. Oh, what a pass! Malone from Hardaway. Penny Hardaway looking sharp in this first half. Nine 
point lead for the United States. Well, this is where this dream team will really be able to play pretty basketball when they generate plays from the defense. And that last one started with aggressive crapping, holding, doing whatever he can. You see him hanging onto that shirt of Oscar Schmidt. Oscar really frustrated and annoyed with it. And as this ball finally got knocked loose, he took a little bit of a strong elbow at Grand Hill. Chatting a little bit to his teammates, saying, yeah, I know they're grabbing and holding, but they're not calling it. Amazing how you can interpret. I can read his lips. I, and it, it, I could see Ed High, Hightower saying, I want to hear any more, Oscar. Oscar speaks fluently uh, English as well as uh, Italian and Spanish, having played in those leagues for uh, a number of years. Oscar, four of seven from the field. He now has 10 points. And the United States leads by eight. Lenny Wilkins going with Hardaway, Miller, Hill, Malone, and Elijah Wan. Miller got caught in a crowd and then lost it. Horacio handling at the point guard position. Santana. Schmidt is down low, again being guarded by Hill. 30-second shot clock is down at 12, and Miller, with the anticipation, able to pick it up. And then Alley from Hardaway blew it. Hardaway could not put it down. Perfect pass by Reggie Miller, and Hardaway, who normally handles that play very easily, just could not stay up in the air long enough. Oh, Hill with the steal taking from Klopke. Look out. Here comes Hill. Well, he took it around the professional style. went to the routine layup and it's a 10-point lead for the United States timeout taken by Brazil with 339 remaining in the first half here's Hill off the steal and it opens up the 10-point mark Greg, and a reminder, Wednesday, July 17th, join Bob Costas in prime time for the Sports Illustrated Olympic Special, a prelude to the games. That'll be Wednesday, July the 17th, right here on NBC. Off the steal, Reggie Miller is hit from behind, and he will head to the free throw line. Well, ever since Fonseca, the little point guard, went to the bench for Brazil, they have really bogged down offensively. They're much more methodical right now. And uh, they're running some plays, but they're very easy for the Dream Team to dissect, and they're either uh, jumping into the passing lane and stealing the ball, or when they are stationary, able to get their hand on a lot of balls, deflect them, and knock them loose. The United States now up by 11. Reggie Miller playing with the protective goggles back from the fractured right eye socket. It will be a busy week for Reggie and a number of other free agents. Greg Double mentioned will be uh, discussing that at uh, halftime. Off the block, here comes Miller, leading hard away. The combination clicks. I think Reggie realized he had to throw that ball just a little bit lower, a little bit to the left, and then Anthony Hardaway took care of the rest. Another nice play by Reggie Miller. And the Dream Team playing up to their name here in the first half with a 14-point lead. Just under three minutes remaining. Oscar Schmidt has gone the entire half just firing one up, got a piece of the glass, and uh, another fast break opportunity, but the pass from Elijah Watt off the bar. Well, here's the block by Penny Hardaway, and uh, picked off nicely by Reggie Miller, and knowing he had Hardaway running again, and that play just failed ever so slightly about two minutes ago. Tried it again and got it done. Horacio, played by Hardaway, Santana, and Schmidt from straight away for three. Well, that's about as wide open as Oscar Schmidt has been in his whole first half. He had about eight feet between him and his defender, but uh, set up nicely. At that time, he moved well without the ball to get open. Hardaway pitching out to Malone and a foul. Oscar Schmidt now five of nine, 13 points. And here comes Shaquille O'Neal, foul committed by Santana. Oscar Schmidt 
The man who led Brazil to that victory in the championship game over the United States in the 87 Pan Am games, he scored 46 points for Brazil, 35 in the, uh, the second half in a classic in Brazilian basketball history. And Oscar said uh, after that game, we have people to carry the piano. We have people who play the piano. I play the piano. And he saw us talking there to Grand Hill, asking him, why are you guarding me so close? Yeah, red lips again. You are excellent. Blocky off the mark. Rebounded by O'Neal with just under two minutes remaining of the half. And here is Hill. leading 45 to 30. Now Schmidt going against Hardaway. Hill over to Hill. And last touch by Schmidt. Miller with the lead for Malone, and the foul is called. It's on Gorke. Timeout taken by the Brazilian team with a minute 25 remaining in this first half. So the green team bouncing back from the unexpected problems yesterday against the U.S. select team. They are up by 15. The 38-year-old Oscar Schmidt has been the basis of much of our conversation in this uh, first half because uh, it's an extraordinary story. He and Teofilo Cruz of Puerto Rico played from 1960 through 76. The only men's basketball players to appear in five Olympic games. Oscar will make it five when he, he plays in Atlanta. Look at uh, some of these some of these numbers. Oscar also uh, certainly uh, had some interest from NBA teams, including the New Jersey Nets. I can recall that uh, they tried to talk him into uh, signing uh, several years back. I remember back in 1984 at the Summer League in Princeton, New Jersey, Oscar was playing with the New Jersey Nets. I was an assistant coach with the 76ers then, coaching Charles Barkley, and Oscar played extremely well. Nobody could stop him. He was averaging well over 30 points uh, during that week, but all the Nets could offer Oscar at that time was $75,000. Obviously, he chose to go back over to Europe where he made much, much more money. This was back in 1984. He was offered a one-year guaranteed $75,000 contract uh, by the Nets, who promised to increase his salary when the team's salary cap restrictions eased uh, the next season. But as you say, he decided to go back to European competition. It's amazing what he's doing at 38 years of age. Obviously, he tried to back off, not play with the national team, was coaxed out of that. Figured he'd just play for the club team in Brazil after 11 years with the, uh, Italy and Spain. And, uh, and of course, he's a one-dimensional player, strictly offense. He's not going to do much at that defensive end. Well, the crowd getting uh, pumped up by what is called the fever meter. And with the help of the public address announcer here at the uh, at the Gund Arena, I think the uh, Brazilian players were scared. <laughs> at the sound of uh, this capacity crowd of better than uh, 20,000 roaring. Carl Malone to the uh, free throw line. United States with its biggest lead. And the United States uh, dominant inside to the tune of a 28 to eight advantage. seeing his first action and the foul against the United States. So you can see just how uncomfortable this Brazilian team is in trying to run some set offensive things. It's so methodical and after you see it a couple of times in the defensive team, it's very easy to read. They would much rather just get it up and go take the first shot is there or make a couple of passes, swing the ball and look for an offensive play there. But the coaching staff led by Ari Vidal and their assistant Mike Frink 
they just don't think they can compete well enough in international competition playing that well. Mike Frank, an interesting man at the assistant coach. There he is on the left part of your screen. Actually was in training camp with the St. Louis Hawks along with Lenny Wilkins and uh, Rod Thorne. His brother Pat played a couple of years uh, with the Cincinnati Royals and uh, with Oscar Robertson in the late 60s. Both of them played at the University of Colorado. Yes, Mike Frick, a native of Denver, was drafted by the Hawks and did not make the team. Longtime assistant coach on the collegiate level in the United States. Shaquille O'Neal. That is not a goaltend. Here's Carl Malone. And the United States up by 18 with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Jack has not gone to his A power game yet in either of the first two games. He is not really dipping that shoulder and powering in, mainly because I don't think he wants to hurt anybody at this juncture, saving himself a little bit and maybe saving the other people. Here with six points in this first half. Shot clock at five. Off the steal. Never able to save the pass and uh, gets it to O'Neal. There's a, a power game uncontested. <laughs> It is a 20-point lead, final seconds of the half. Nascimento, Nascimento is stopped and time runs out in this first half. Some of the Brazilian players looking for a foul call. So the green team concludes with a 19-4 run. The last six minutes, they lead Brazil 50-30. to Greg Gumbel and the halftime. Welcome back to the Gund Arena in Cleveland. Marv Albert with Matt Gukas and Cheryl Miller. A 20-point lead for the United States over Brazil, and this is the second exhibition game for the Dream Team. A look at the IBM halftime statistics, and the United States doing it in every department. 20 of 38 shooting, 53%. Brazil only 9 for 28 from the field. U.S. with the edge off the boards and doing it in the uh, fast break point department 28 to 6. They uh, took a 16-13 uh, lead in the early going. They have not trailed since. 50 to 30 the score at the half. We'll be right back. And we're set for the start of play in the uh, second half. The United States 50 and Brazil 30. The high point men Oscar Schmidt with 13 on five of nine from the field, two of four from three-point range. Mitch Richmond leading the U.S. with 10 points. He has hit four of seven, eight apiece for Pippen and O'Neal, and uh, Shaquille also has six rebounds. There is the 38-year-old uh, Oscar Schmidt chatting with his coach, Ari Vidal, the man who originally discovered Oscar. In the starting lineup today, four-time NBA All-Star and the most valuable player of the 1995 All-Star game by way of the Sacramento Kings. Well, after nine minutes of play, we were tied at 18 all, and Brazil had only one turnover. In the last 11 minutes, they turned it over nine times, and the United States outscored Brazil. 32 to 12 and a big reason for all of that was Fonseca the little point guard for Brazil did such a good job taking care of the ball the early going of that first half he only had five points and four assists but did a good job for Brazil he may be just as important as Oscar Schmidt to this team wow a, uh, the rolling ball effect with several players going down as uh, Richmond is able to get two more Charles Barkley kind of enjoyed the moment and this is Fonseca back on the floor. Fighting Benucci works the screen from the out. And Fonseca passed on the three. Schmidt shot clock uh, down to seven. Fonseca could not get the dribble going. Shot clock down to four. Oscar's going to have to fire one up, which he would not mind, but uh, could not get the handle. Again, the pressure defense of the Dream Team just not letting Brazil get into anything, making every pass very difficult. John Stockton and David Robinson starting this second half, neither played in the first half. Richmond and Stockton in the backcourt. Robinson up front with Barkley and Pippen. Pippen, Ooh, yes! Scotty Pippen over Joe Viana. 
And here's Fonseca trying to penetrate, then changed his mind. Pippen is five of seven. He has ten points. Get out of here. Barkley uh, just told Vianney, get out of here. At the wide lane. <laughs> and he don't want him anywhere near it. And Schmidt threw the foul. Will Vianna understand the body language, you think? Foul committed by uh, Robinson. Uh, Charles loves to carry on that constant conversation with the officials. In this case, Ada Hightower, a referee in the uh, NCAA, can understand Charles. In, in many cases, they have no idea what he is saying, which is probably just as well. Ed Hightower out of the Big Ten of the Big Eight. There's a three-point uh, shooting attempt, so Schmidt hits the uh, three free throws. And it's the United States with a 54-32 lead. The second half just underway here at the Gun Arena in Cleveland. Robinson sets the screen. And Pippen was hacked. Well, Brazil setting up in their 2-3 matchup zone that time. And a couple of mishandles by Scottie Pippen and the rest of the, uh, the USA and uh, not getting into anything. So some of these teams, if they keep mixing up the defense, at times can confuse or bother the, the set offense uh, of the USA. But if they play good defense, they're not going to have to worry at all about set offense. They'll score enough in transition. Pippen for three. Well, Barkley getting it out to Pippen, and uh, Scottie now has 13 points. 57-32 for the U.S. Stocked it all over Fonseca. And the foul is called. And apparently an offensive foul. Fonseca pushing Stockton aside. And he's called for the personal. And uh, there you see some more aggressive play. Another foul on Fonseca. That is his third. And the little smirk on the face of John Stockton, who fooled Fonseca on two successive occasions. They're drawing the foul. John Stockton, very clever. Fought by many in the NBA. Some say dirty. I don't think he's dirty. I think he's very crafty, very clever. And I would say he knows a lot of tricks, having been in this league uh, of the NBA 12 years. I, I think he would go for the word crafty yeah, rather than, than, than dirty, I think. <laughs> and the foul called on Del Santos. So David Robinson to the line. Robinson set out the entire first half. The most valuable player in 1995, a seven-time NBA All-Star. This past season averaged 25 points, 12 rebounds, three assists. And as we touched on earlier, a member of that uh, 1988 Olympic uh, basketball team that lost in Seoul, and he was also on the team that lost in the Pan Am Games to Brazil back in 87. Hey, David Robinson had to spend those, but didn't have to. He, with his obligation to the Naval Academy, spent two years in the Navy. He got that opportunity to play an Olympic competition, which certainly helped him come in as a very well-prepared professional at 24 years of age when he came into the NBA. And as Fonseca drove the middle, took the hit. Foul on uh, Stockton, although Scotty Pippen was uh, raising his hand, indicating the foul was on him. And Andre Fonseca to the free throw line. Now this position is a very difficult one for Brazil. They know that Fonseca is going to do a lot of good things for him, as he did in the, the first half of the first half. But when they go to their backup point guards, things really break down. But they have a lot of other holes uh, in this particular team. They are not a good defensive team, not a good rebounding team. They shoot the ball well. They don't really pass it that well. So they, they lose out on a lot of scoring opportunities. But as you said the first half, Mark, this team is expected to finish finish anywhere between second and fourth in their pool. Richmond. And another opportunity kept alive by Pippen. Nice pass from Stockton. Richmond bottled up. And here comes Schmidt on the wing. He'll pull up. Robinson with the rebound. So Oscar Schmidt is now 5 for 11 
from the field. Pippen passing on the three. Good it. Stockton. Richmond fires. A three for Mitch Richmond. And the United States leading 61 33. 15 points for Richmond. He's hit six of ten. This is the biggest lead of the game. Manucci. Viana cut off by Barkley. Shot clock is at five. Del Santos had to fire it up. And it knocked away from Viana, who touched it last. A brutal start for Brazil here in the second half. We see Lenny Wilkins standing up on the sidelines. He had to be happy with the defensive effort that he got from his club in the first half. But despite what the score is, don't even look at the scoreboard if you're a, a dream teamer right now. Just come out and keep making basketball plays. Keep doing the things defensively that you're capable of, and you'll be able to stay on the floor for longer periods of time. Well, Pippen tried to knock it away, but he's called for the foul, making uh, contact. The U.S. has hit four of five from the field here at the start of the second half, while Brazil is 0 for four. There you see the pool A that the United States is in in the uh, early preliminary rounds of the Olympics. The United States will play each of those five teams as they will do the same thing in the in pool B, and then the uh, quarterfinal round where presumably the United States will win their pool and play number four and, and wind their way down. Yugoslavia, obviously, the top team in Pool B. Croatia, Lithuania. Fonseca hit on the both. The United States will open up the Olympic schedule Saturday, July 20th, Saturday night against Argentina. Here's Pippen. Robinson. Monday, July 22nd, the U.S. will meet up with their good friends from Angola. Oh, Charles Barkley just cannot wait. 63-35, <laughs> the United States with the lead, and Schmidt going glass, and claiming he was foul. Oscar in a, a conversation with the NBA official, George Tolliver, off the turnover, Manucci, met by Robinson, gives it back to Oscar. Stockton comes flying by, and Schmidt hits the three. Well, a couple of veterans there, Minucci and Oscar Schmidt, know each other very well, playing together for a number of years, and just Oscar trailing on the break as Minucci penetrated toward the baseline. Nice fast break play for Brazil, who looks for that three-point shot in transition. And Richmond fouled. He'll go to the line for first aid. Timeout is called. Another look at Oscar Schmidt, who is now seven of 13. 21 points in all. Five minutes gone by in the second half. He hit 46 points of that game to lead Brazil to the win over the uh, U.S. And uh, Oscar emotional here on the bench, upset about the way things have gone and uh, upset with the officials. Well, the, the Dream Teamers are playing him so tight and so tough and and playing him before he gets the basketball, trying to get up into his chest. And, and uh, when he does get the ball, they're challenging every shot. And there is a lot of body contact, but international basketball in certain areas of the court can be much more physical uh, and, and much rougher. And so far, these officials have left the USA bump and bang Oscar Schmidt a number of times. Fonseca heaving one up. And a three-on-one. The look away from Richmond and the foul. hit by Oscar Schmidt, the basketball kick, and the foul. <laughs> Charles Barkley looking around for the official, making sure that this basket was going to count to make sure he got the continuation as Oscar Schmidt, who is not much of a defender, and we see not much of a strong fouler there, unable to keep Barkley from getting that shot off, but there's a lot of people in basketball who have not gotten that shot off, and Anthony Hardaway said, hey, I've seen that before. I've seen Barkley just go right through people. Three-point play for Charles Barkley. Foul on Schmidt, his first. 
five and a half gone by in the second half and the United States with a commanding 68-41 lead. Foul committed by Pippen. Substitution for Brazil, Kyle Silvera checking back in. Scotty Pippen not liking that call, realizing there's been a lot of other contact figure. He just put his forearm out there, not even hand checking. And uh, a little upset with the official uh, making that call, but the way that Schmidt has been complaining, he finally got a whistle. Another turnover for Brazil. Schmidt is the high point man with 21. He's hit seven of 13, four of eight three pointers. Pippen on the recovery, but came from out of bounds and uh, knew it. You know, with only two officials, uh, a lot of the game is missed, and the NBA players are so comfortable and familiar with three referees where the court is obviously much better covered. With uh, only two officials, uh, you can uh, get away with some things on the weak side that you normally wouldn't be able to get away with in an NBA game. Last touch by Pippen. The Dream Team will have a couple of days of rest. And uh, then they'll play the Chinese Olympic team in Phoenix on a Wednesday night. Then Friday, they continue the exhibition schedule against Australia in Salt Lake City. Barkley able to split his way through. Nice ball movement. Pippen blew the stuff. Set up by Stockton, but not able to put it down. Schmidt, met by Robinson. Schmidt with a runner. Silvera gets to it. Off the double team. And Manucci with the ball regrouping. Oh, hooked out. And an offensive foul is called. Foul on Silvera. Mentioned the, uh, the schedule a moment ago. The games against China and Australia will be televised by our, our friends at the TNT. And we'll be on hand again a week from tomorrow. That's a week from today, I should say, Sunday, July 14th. In the United States against the Greek Olympic team in Indianapolis, 1 o'clock Eastern time on NBC. That's next Sunday. Richmond. Oh, beautiful move. He actually adjusted while in midair. Mitch Richmond has had an outstanding game. He leads the United States with 19. He is really working hard, a little bit frustrated with the fact that he has missed a couple of wide open three-point shots. Normally, he will knock them down, but is really working hard at the defensive end, knowing that if he keeps doing that, he'll keep getting his play, his, uh, playing time. And Silvera with his first field goal. So the U.S. leads 70-43. They double up on Stockton. Richmond for Robinson. Oh, beautiful play, Mitch Richmond. He looked off the defender, looking at Barkley and able to find the Admiral on the right side. Yeah. <laughs> running off the pick from Silvera, then finds Manucci, who's been quiet. That's a three. Fernando Manucci, Fernando Manucci with only five points. Nice ball movement by the U.S. that Richmond has hit. Uh, John Stockton starting this second half has really done a good job of keeping the ball moving. And there they saw the good feed by Richmond as he got into the lane. But the ball is not staying in anybody's hands. Nobody is holding it because I think they realize also that if they don't work hard defensively, they hold the ball or put it on the floor too much, they're going to get a seat on the bench. At this juncture of what the Dream Team is trying to do and trying to come together as a team, they learned a lot yesterday of what not to do, in particular in that first half, by coming out lethargically, primarily at the defensive end. And they never want to do that again. Yes, at the half, the uh, Dream Team trailed by 17 points. said we will not have a first half like that again well that was certainly true today with the u.s up by by 20 right here they lead 74 46. i laugh at it because you know that there shouldn't be any team near us i mean that's what you laugh about because they're competitors 
we're competing against each other all year, and once we finally get together, we want to just bang on other people. This is not an all-star game. And this, is, this will be a teammate for five weeks. We have to play together, party against each other. And you realize, wow, this is actually a team. I think a lot of people think we're going to have a lot of problems with uh, uh, everyone coming together from different teams. I, I don't think that's a problem. I think we know what we have to do. Uh, I think we're educated individuals that we know that we can put our egos behind and, and get this thing done. And Mick Griffin of the Sacramento Kings has led the way here this afternoon. He's the high point man for the United States with 21 points on 7 of 12 shooting. Viana. Robinson got a piece of it. And a foul called on Richmond. Uh, Mitch Richmond quietly goes about his business out in Sacramento. Does not get a lot of uh, national attention from the media, but a perennial all-star in the Western Conference. And all of the shooting guards in the league know they're in for a tough night when they face Mitch Richmond, not only when he's guarding them, but particularly because he scored those 22-23 a game almost as a habit. Well, John Stockton able to cash in after the rejection by David Robinson. One other quality about Rich, Rich, uh, Richmond that uh, people are not aware of aside from his skills as an all-around basketball player. Another steal. Here's Barkley with Fonseca back. And it's now 78-46 for the United States. Mitch Richmond can impersonate just about anyone in the NBA in terms of their style. Some say even the way they talk, including Marv Albert. No, I'm not, I'm not saying broadcast. Please. Although he hasn't seen my jump shot, I don't know if he can master that. That's what I was talking about. Right. It's not a thing of beauty. No, no, we don't want to talk about that. I need screens at all times. All right, here's Richmond for three. Then again, man, I have seen some of the grainy black and white <laughs> oh. <laughs> of uh, a fine-looking jump shot that M. Gukas used to attempt. I don't like the reference to grainy. <laughs> United States 78 and Brazil 46. Uh, it is funny when players do imitate others as far as their idiosyncrasies uh, out on the floor, whether it's uh, shooting free throws or their low post moves or they're complaining to referees. Right. Go, 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 go. And Stockton leads the break. Stockton to the left hand. Put home by Barkley. And believe it or not, I think uh, John Stockton, I think he tried to make that shot, but he knew he had Charles Barkley on the other side. If he was going to miss it, he was going to miss it long. Almost a pass off the glass from John Stockton, who was used to making a lot of passes, leading the NBA in assists the last nine years. Pippen with the block on Schmidt. Substitutions, Carl Malone and Reggie Miller checking back in, replacing Charles Barkley and Mitch Richmond. 21 points for Richmond. And Barkley with seven. Another strong outing for Charles Barkley. And Barcelona, he was one of the most dominant players. Led the Dream Team averaging 18 points a game, and he shot 71%. What Charles likes to point out is that he was seven of eight from three-point range in the Olympic run in Barcelona. Well, the fact that he only took eight uh, during uh, regular seasons, uh, primarily with the Phoenix Suns over the last uh, uh, four or five years, has really probably taken more than he should as uh, Scotty Pippen finishes off the play from John Stockton. But since Cotton Fitzsimmons took over as coach of the Phoenix Suns, he has kind of uh, pulled the plug on the uh, wild three-pointers. So Charles has had to pull back there, and Charles might not have to worry about it too much longer. He could be a Houston Rocket before long. Charles will make his return to uh, Phoenix on Wednesday when the Dream Team goes up against China. Chant of USA. The U.S. with a 10-0 run to take this 82-46 lead in a wipeout here in Cleveland. And if Charles does become a Rocket, he will be encouraged to take that three-point shot with all the double teaming that goes on inside against uh, Akeem Olajuwon. There 
There'll be much movement during the course of this week. The free agent period begins Tuesday at noon Eastern time. Whoa. And Brazil will put it in play. You know, Matt, there's never been a scenario like this in the NBA where free agency can change the balance of power in the league. Nucci able to scramble for the ball. The one plus I see is Silvera fires one up. With all the uh, the free agents uh, available on the open market, that it, it, it does make for some movement of players in the NBA. It's very difficult to make trades because of the salary cap restriction. On one hand, that's good because the teams are so stable and fans can get accustomed to rooting for their favorite players as opposed to other sports. I think at times in baseball and, and in the NHL, it's become a rotisserie league. I, I think there's too much movement. But we will certainly see movement next week. It is so hard for teams to get so much under the salary cap. But we see teams like uh, the New York Knicks and the Miami Heat. Uh, Detroit is well under, uh, you know, there are a number of teams that Los Angeles Lakers are going to be well God. under the salary cap. So there will be a lot of maneuvering uh, done with not only signing free agents, but you're going to be able to make more trades because of that fact. Also, the NFL, when they went through the whole Plan B situation, that I, I thought there was just too much movement uh, going on. Robinson is fouled. Like uh, Shaq enjoyed that. Nice pass right here. Reggie Miller with the lead on target. Well, Reggie has had a number of pretty passes this afternoon. Two in the first half to Penny Hardaway on alley oops, one that they converted on. But uh, Reggie uh, Miller uh, does not deserve that label as just an offensive player. No, he is not the best defensive shooting guard in the NBA, but he works at it. He knows his responsibilities as what he has to do for Larry Brown and the Indiana Pacers at the defensive end, and he will chase his man for much of the night. And uh, you know what he's going to do at the offensive end, but Reggie Miller is also an unselfish player. He will give the ball up. I said all that because Cheryl Miller told me oh, so. <laughs> We've been trying to force the information out of Cheryl, who claims she really does not know, but did indicate at halftime that Reggie did go from being 100% certain that he'd be back for the Indiana Pacers signing the, the contract. But blocked by Malone. And back comes Grant Hill. And that pass off the mark, so Brazil will take it back. But now Cheryl says it's 50-50, which will make things very interesting uh, this week for the free agents. Subject of uh, Reggie Miller, let's check in with uh, someone particularly close to Reggie. Here's Cheryl. Well, Mark, right now I'm standing next to Charles Barkley, who's just been killing my brother the whole time. And I was telling you, Charles, hey. the reason he's shooting so poorly, if they could find some passes on this, then he'd be in better shape. He got the best, he the best player Brazil got out there. <laughs> yeah, he can't throw a beach ball in the I'm going to tell him exactly you, you oh, said that. Oh, he'll be with me. Oh, he'll definitely I'll be with me. got him under control. All right, Charles. Kind words from Charles Barkley. Reggie Miller is uh, 0 for 2 from the field. But he's a passer today. He's yes. looking for other people. He has taken the goggles off. Maybe he feels he can make a jump shot without them. He has had to wear those protective goggles because of that eye injury he had against Detroit late in the year. Finally came back in game five against the Atlanta Hawks. Whoa. scoring 29. Wow. Robinson in the uh, collision with Silvera. And uh, Silvera ends up uh, going down off the, the uh, right push he's by the, Robinson. He was watching somebody else that we know that uh, can fall back. What's his name? <laughs> well, we can take our pick between Bill Lane Beer or Dennis Rodman. Uh, Dennis has turned it into an art form. He learned very well from Bill Lane Beer who did it well before Dennis Robin did it when he came to the Detroit Pistons. And away from the ball, the uh, call on Hill. 
David Robinson continues the uh, conversation with, with the official. Six minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the game, and it has been a rough. United States 85 and Brazil 50. The U.S. over the foul limit. Rogerio Klofke at the uh, free throw line. Average 27 points per game for Franca in the Brazilian league. But has not had the touch uh, here this afternoon. Hardaway is putting a move on. Alex Robinson. And Klofke back. That was intended for Silvera, but broken up. Well, you can see that the Dream Team still learning one another, not really all that comfortable with the, the, the timing involved that you need to make those kind of alley-oop plays. But I think another week or so of games and practice will do it. Right, Reggie Miller fouled on the four-on-two break. And Miller to the uh, free throw line. Silvera so called for the uh, foul. United States at 56% shooting. They've hit 33 of 69. Mitch Richmond is the high point man. They've had the edge off of the boards. The 38-year-old Oscar Schmidt leading the way for Brazil with 21 on 7 of, of 16. But uh, the rest of the squad, 8 of 39 from the field. Well, we saw in the first half where Oscar Schmidt made a couple of nice passes, but he's not the kind of scorer who makes his teammates better. He really doesn't run the baseline that hard and come off the screen, which would enable some of those screeners to get good looks at the basket. And when you're as good a scorer he is, you do have that responsibility to get others involved. He with it, played by Hill. Cassio Lato with the ball, making his first appearance of the day, and being chased by O'Neill. Shot clock at five. We got a two, got a one, and it's a shot clock violation. A good idea by Nazio Mento, knocking the ball off the leg of Shaquille O'Neal, but did not get the benefit of the whistle from Ed Hightower. He, he was the man who initiated the uh, contact. And this is Caio Cassiolato. Oh, Malone able to slap it away from Jorge. And uh, Brazil will have it with 19 on the 30-second clock. Marv Albert with Matt Dukas and Cheryl Miller from the Gund Arena in Cleveland. Nascimento. Firing from all angles, not able to hit, and then he's stripped by Hardaway, but recovered by Cassiolato, who is fouled. Scotty Pippen. Had himself a good first half, 13 points in all for Scotty. A reminder, NBC Sports presenting the Suzu Celebrity Golf Championship. Beginning next Saturday, 4 o'clock Eastern, right here on NBC. A chance to see some of the best athletes in the world who have been, like yourself, Matt, bitten by the golf bug, uh, competing in this uh, pro tournament. The field including Michael Jordan, Pete Sampras, John Elway, Dan Marino, Johnny Bench, Mike Schmidt, Jerry Rice. That'll be next Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Right here on NBC. That man would like to be uh, taking part. Foul was called on Cassiolato, sending Hardaway to the line. Uh, Charles likes to play. He doesn't like to have to count all of those shots. Normally when he plays, it's uh, you know, a match play situation where you're playing just holes, and it doesn't matter if you, you triple bogey or take a 9 or 10 in a hole. But when you got to have to count every shot and cut every putt, Charles doesn't like that. 54. Charles would like his uh, own particular set of rules. Rocky. 
touch. Protecting against Hill and then picked off by Malone. Hardaway with the lead. Throw it at both Hill and O'Neal. I'm not certain who that was intended for. Here is Hill. And fouled by Klopke. Well, he just threw it up in the air, and any one of those blue shirts had the opportunity to go after it. Grant Hill is the one who got up there. You were mentioning yesterday how Grant Hill has uh, bulked up a little bit since the end of the Detroit uh, season. Mitch Richmond finished for the uh, afternoon icing those knees. Had a strong all-around game, scoring 21, doing an outstanding job defensively. Lenny Wilkins was saying that both Mitch Richmond and Scotty Pippen would have the responsibility of, of finding Oscar Schmidt, and when they did stay very close, it wound up well, Scotty Pippen had him most of the time. Holloway with the steal, took it away from Dos Santos. That's the look away. Yes, and it counts. So Grant Hill to the line. Oh, those quick hands of Penny Hardaway knocking that ball loose, and he has really kept his head up this afternoon, looking for open people at every opportunity. Grand Hill in the right place at the right time. I think Ted Collins and the Pistons are going to look for a little more help during this offseason as far as ball handling is concerned, because Grand Hill had to handle so much, almost as the point forward, much like Scottie Pippen plays for the Chicago Bulls, but it takes its toll on a guy like Hill. Lofty showing the outside touch. Is called for the charge, an offensive foul. Six foot nine, 250 pound. Jorge taking that hit. Timeout taken with 3.44 remaining in the game. As Prince uh, will be a featured guest, the United States with a 92 57 lead over Brazil. Another steal. And you can tell the Dream Team not really worried about the score or the uh, the time. They're going to keep playing the defense, working on their full court trap. Oh, Malone got a piece of it and then a foul from behind. Charge to O'Neal. This has not been a competition here this afternoon. It has been a performance which has led to extensive garbage time here in the second half. But uh, Lenny Wilkins certainly pleased off what he saw yesterday, particularly in the first what? half against the uh, U.S. Select team, a group of college all-stars who led by as many as 17 at the half and hung in and lost by over six points. Some people and some teams may look at this as maybe uh, trying to run up the score by pressing a full court in this situation, but you know, this is an opportunity for the Dream Team to get used to playing with one another and do some of the things that they're going to have to do against the better teams like Croatia, Lithuania, and Yugoslavia. Well, the Brazilian team looking for a foul. Miller hits the three and is getting the treatment from the bench. They are all over a Reggie Miller who hits his first three-pointer, but uh, Hardaway came up with a steal, and uh, Brazil thought it could have been a foul on, on Hardaway. Cassiolato not able to hit. O'Neal with the rebound. Look out. The save by Hardaway, and here's Hill. Oh, Penny Hardaway making one of those plays that he seems to do about three or four times in every NBA game that he plays. That was a, a poor outlet pass by Shaquille O'Neal on its way out of bounds, but Penny able to jump up and save it before it, he and the ball would go out of bounds. Knew he had a blue shirt in the middle of the floor, just flipped it there so uh, Grant Hill could finish off that play. 100 to 59. Cassiolato will head to the line. Grant Hill, four of five now for 10 points, along with four rebounds and, and three assists. Biggest lead of the day for the United States. Barkley and Pippen all over Reggie Miller after he hit that three-pointer. Well, it had to be the goggles. As soon as he took the goggles off, much more comfortable right. shooting the jump shot. But I'm sure Reggie Miller would invite not only Charles and Scotty, but anybody else that would uh, like to challenge him in a game of uh, 21 or horse. Hardaway. And Hardaway out of recovery. And a very active.
to Penny Hardaway. He now has 10 points. 102-61 as we come up on two minutes remaining of the game. Try to hit the cutting hill. Well, there's two of those Hardaway plays. Actually, we saw another one in the first half when he finished off the uh, uh, the alley oop dunk from uh, 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 Reggie Miller. Shaquille O'Neal loves to handle the ball in the middle of the floor. Actually, a bounce pass probably would have gotten the job done. And this is now taking on the look of what we saw the original green team pull off in 1992 in uh, Barcelona. Klopke with the bucket. And he will go to the line. Well, as part of Visa's continuing effort to support amateur athletics, they are proud to donate $10,000 to the U.S. Olympic team in the name of Mitch Richmond, our Visa player of the game. And in Detroit yesterday, Visa's donation was made in the name of, of Scotty Pippen, who had an outstanding all-around ball game. Here's Klopke with Hardaway back. Six the score. Klopke now has 12 points. Carl Malone adding two more. He now has nine. We are down to one minute remaining of the game. And this is game two of the five-game exhibition tour for the U.S. Olympic team. Not been pretty for Brazil in the second half. Well, we saw that kind of defensive effort that the USA did against Oscar Schmidt early in the game. Even though Oscar was able to score early, still got his 21 points. All in all, the Dream Teamers frustrated him time and time again. He felt he was manhandled and pushed all around. By the way, Oscar's wife and children down in Orlando, no doubt taking in some of this game. Off the two on one. His teammate Hardaway bit off the mark, but uh, Shaquille handled it well. 106 to 66, the score with a half minute to go. Oh, ball for the goaltender, and I don't think he'll mind as Caio Cassiolato will get credit for the field goal. I think if Shaq could have gotten his hand on that, he would have put it in the upper deck. He really wanted to swat that thing. Down to 15 seconds. Here's Miller. Oh, oh class. Reggie Miller for three. His second three-pointer. He has ten points. Final seconds. The U.S. with a 109-68 victory. Down to one and six ten seconds to go. The by play continues. Reggie's been the target. He fires one from the front court. And that will conclude. Crowd here at the Gund Arena. Standing ovation for the Dream Team as they have defeated Brazil 109 to 68. The high point man, Mitch Richmond, with 21, will be back in Cleveland in a moment. Cleveland, the Dream Team bouncing back from the poor effort yesterday. They shot 41 of 69, 59%. And they crushed Brazil, led by Mitch Richmond, who had 21 points. Tonight, catch a full hour of must-see TV comedy, Man About You, and news radio, then the Sunday night movie, Virus, all tonight here on NBC. Marv Albert, Matt Cooker.